Oh, you can't see me. I got my ND filter today. So there's a newish tripod out on the market for vloggers and it's being marketed as the Gorilla Pod Killer. It's actually what I'm shooting on right now. Oh look, there's John. So, okay, during the month and a half that I've been testing out the Switch Pod, I've been also doing research on some other videos about the Switch Pod, and I noticed something. People were comparing the Switch Pod to older GorillaPod models like the 3K and the 5K kits, which in my opinion is kind of unfair because we all know that those wore out over time. But then came the 3K Pro Kit, which is the metallic version of the GorillaPod that is way more sturdy and versatile than any other GorillaPod. So let's see how the Switch Pod holds up with the Joby 3K Pro Kit GorillaPod. So instead of comparing the tripods themselves, which is not all that possible because the Gorilla Pod can pretty much wrap on anything and it has a ball head versus the Switch Pod, or yeah, it doesn't have any of that. So we put them head to head in three types of shot scenarios, a lockdown shot, handheld shots, and some experimental shots to see which tripod really helps us make better vlogs. And the results were interesting. This Starbucks is like pinky up fancy. It's like a little, a little more extra, don't you think? It's a little extra. So another common vlogging scenario is, you know, when you're at a Starbucks or somewhere where you have a table and you got a tabletop, Gorilla Pod, boom. The great part is the ball head. So it's not much to it with the Gorilla Pod, just putting it on the tabletop. I can even adjust the ball head. The ball head's probably like the biggest thing in difference in, compar in comparison to like the Switch Pod. So boom, I just got my nicely composed shot and sip some coffee. Let's try the Switch Pod. I will say, the one thing that is cool about this is the, uh... Oh, yeah. That's, that's the trick. That's the trick right there. So what's the trick now? Do you, like, scoot down? That's a so good point. Well, let me just again... Ow! That hurts. Like, it pinches you. Okay. So the problem with this is that's it. I can't change my composition by any means. I have to squat down and I'm, I haven't moved. I'm in the same exact seat and location and that's a big negative there is you get what you got. Now granted, yes, I can go back into, there you are, and go back into vlog mode and then I can just do my selfie shot here and then kind of maybe rest my arm, but that's what you need to do in comparison to the Gorilla Pod where you just, you know, trap it down, move the ball head, yeah, that's how kind of that's how that rolls. With a bag? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a little sketch, but uh, if uh, you are in a situation where you need it on a tabletop and you don't have the composition appropriately with the table and the chair, use your camera bag. We also wanted to test out what it looked like vlogging on a non-flat surface. So John and I found this interesting looking artificial grass park. I mean, and that's just kind of how it is when it comes to vlogging, is you're just kind of all over the place and you just see what looks good and what works and then you just go. This is a great example of something that I don't like about the Switch Pod, which is the fact that I'm in a not even level surface here. It's a big hill, but I like the fact that it's green, I want to shoot here, so we're gonna figure out a couple scenarios where I can shoot with this thing. And let's see if the hill works out. Oh! have to do one of these here. Yeah, I am laying down and this is not the typical vlog situation, but I did want to get that background and this is kind of what I had to do, but uh, obviously if I let go of the switch pod, it does that. Where's the gorilla pod? Okay. Same thing, I'll just start by laying down, but I don't think I have to because if I get the gorilla pod level enough, adjust the ball head, Boom, that's the shot that I wanted all along. Kind of giving you some understanding of what's happening right now. I can be in the situation where I'm outside of the office just taking a break. You know, the sky's the limit in what I can do with this particular story, but that is a lot easier than, well, what you saw with the switch pod. There was also a scenario within that same park where I wanted a medium shot and I saw a chair in front of me, so I was like, let's try that. Okay, so we're gonna compensate here. I got this chair here and uh, 
This is a shot that I normally like to get is kind of wrapping on chairs or rails or whatever. And what's cool is I can hold the switch pod and then just start vlogging this way as you can see. Obviously if I let go, to the point, it's not versatile enough for everyday vlogging in any given situation, no matter where you're putting yourself at. I feel with the, the switch pod, you're kind of limited into where you're able to shoot, and that kind of deflects the fact of what v true vlogging is, which is capturing the moment in any given scenario. I can't really do that with the switch pod, whereas the gorilla pod. And again, just like that, I have a well-composed shot, slightly overexposed, but gives you this really good A-roll shot of me just locked down on this chair, as you can see there. And I can continue to tell my story, where I'm at, doesn't matter where I'm at. And that's why I love the 3K Pro Gorillapod so much is because it literally is just versatile. It just helps me create better content and tell a better story with almost an unlimited amount of shot selection that I have. Regarding composition, when it comes to lockdown shots, the SwitchPod totally does its thing and it's blissful on a flat surface. However, as you saw, on a non-flat surface, it I mean, you can't do anything with it. And another thing to keep in mind when it comes to composition is the Joby Gorillapod has a ball head. So I'm obviously able to maneuver my camera to wherever I want it to be until I get my nice composed shot. When it comes to handheld shots, I tested both tripods out to see which one gave me the better stabilization. This is a pull in and pull out shot using the Gorillapod 3K Pro Kit. And this is the result of that same test with the SwitchPod. With a lot of the tests in regards to the handheld shots, the switch pod felt like I was getting some type of like jitter. I don't know what it was. It, it like almost forced me to rotate my wrist a little bit. You have to feel it to really understand it. Yeah, I'm definitely moving. I'm, jig I'm jiggling a little bit. The other handheld shot we tested is the pan. And going from right to left, this is the result from the gorilla pod. And this is what the switch pod did. And panning with the switch pod, I was also able to get a pretty decent shot as well. With the pan, the gorilla pod has a slight advantage because I'm able to maneuver the legs in what I call gorilla pod stabilization mode. And I'm able to use my hips to get a nice clean pan. But I think this one's kind of a draw because they both gave me a really good pan. Now with the tilt shot, I did the same thing with the gorilla pod and put it into gorilla pod stabilization mode. Now the other shot scenario we tested in were just trying to create some experimental shots. We tried some whip transitions to see which one felt better, looked better. The Gorilla Pod definitely didn't have issues for me because I use the Gorilla Pod all the time for whip transitions. But with the Switch Pod itself, it just wasn't that stable. I always got this weird flick movement. It totally could have been me, but after you get to a certain point, you just do this all the time. I don't I don't know, it's weird. You can be the judge and decide which whip transition you think came out better. From my personal perspective, I think that the Gorilla Pod gave me a better whip transition versus the Switch Pod, but not by much. And then came the selfie vlogging medium shot. So this is your typical selfie shot, the medium vlogging shot. And I do have to say that the Switch Pod is really good at just keeping a good grip. This is what it's really good for, is this nice selfie handheld shot. Feels great, and I have really good distance. As you could even see John in the background, and the camera is probably maybe, I don't know, was that a foot, maybe? Let's try the Gorilla Pod, obviously, because I do that all the time. All right, and then setting up the Gorilla Pod, you do have to bend it a little bit to get kind of the same type of shot, you know, for the most part. We are used to this gorilla pod situation with the vlogging. You know, even looking at John in the same exact place, I don't get as far as I did with the, the switch pod on the gorilla pod, but I do get that medium shot that I want, and it's something that we've all kind of just been accustomed to. So I would say a slight edge to the switch pod on this one, but then again, that's definitely what it's intended for. And I think because the switch pod was able to get me a further extended reach using a crop sensor mirrorless camera, the Canon M50, I'll give the slight edge to the switch pod because it allowed me to display more visual information in my background. 
Then we did a skyfall shot, or otherwise known as a pedestal shot, on that same mural. This is what the Gorillapod gave us. This is a hard shot to achieve without a gimbal, but I think the Gorillapod definitely did that shot justice on that mural. When it came to the switch pod, the handle itself made it easy to drop down, but after I got into the middle, I started to shake a little bit. And that wasn't intentional. That was just using the mechanics of my arm, dropping down using the switch pod with that particular motion. It's like, I just get stuck here. In regards to weight performance, the switch pod is definitely the winner because it can totally hold like a person. I did some and I saw Pat Flynn constantly standing on it. He's a small dude, but I mean, he's a dude. But with the 3K Pro Kit Gorillapod, it can easily hold my Sony a7 II and its extended battery pack and my external LCD, or a BMO and my external LCD, or a BMO and a mic and my external LCD. In general, I would say you should get a switch pod if your vlogging situations aren't that eclectic. You can just pop it on a flat surface, no problem. Maybe you just vlog inside your house all day. Or if you're just a walk and talker and you just pop it in selfie mode the whole time. Understand that with the switch pod, you are extremely limited when it comes to shooting out in public situations. Obviously the gorilla pod can wrap on a tree. It can wrap on a chair, as you saw. After using the switch pod for over a month and a half, I won't switch to it as my main shooter, but it might be nice for some behind the scenes content where I can just pop it down behind us and we can start shooting ourselves, shooting other stuff. I think that may be a reason to keep it in my camera bag, but my main shooter is still totally gonna be the 3K Pro K Gorilla Pod. I'm curious what you think in the comments though. Which one do you think you should buy? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Crush that subscribe button for more videos like this, and I will see you on the next one. I'm out.